What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, we're going to be replacing the high pressure fuel pump that's found in my Mini Cooper. So if you guys are staying up with the channel, you guys would know that that is the last part that I need to get this thing up and going. So I've been building this car for a long time. I got it going, I got it tuned, but I noticed that it's not exactly feeding the engine um, and supplying it with the fuel that it needs. So I ordered a brand new mini genuine high pressure fuel pump. This is the doohickey right here. It was not cheap, but I'm gonna get into how I got this and why I purchased this from where I did because I will never need to buy another one of these again. So, with that being said, let's get started in the engine bay and we're gonna take off the old high pressure fuel pump. So, with the hood popped open, you'll be able to see the high pressure fuel pump if you come around here to the side. So, this is actually attached to the cylinder head. It's attached and it's driven from the intake camshaft that's found in the cylinder head. So, in order to get access to this, we're going to need to move a couple things uh, like the intake, some wires, um, and we're going to be able to get access to the bolts that are holding it onto the cylinder head once we remove those. Now, the one thing that is common about these Mini Coopers is these high pressure fuel pumps failing. So, before you guys go ahead and just purchase, a brand new upgraded or even replacement high pressure fuel pump I would go to your local dealership to see if your car has a recall these things are not cheap to replace and if you guys can get one for free like why not so first things first we're gonna remove this entire intake tube from the engine so I'm gonna be disconnecting it right here where it connects up to the turbocharger right here and this one right here where it connects up to the other end of the intake once you have those loosened up, we should be able to slide the entire thing up and out. So that's all loose, that's loose. Slide off, slide off, and we're gonna have to just set all this aside. And this on its own will make a big difference as to how much room we have over here. So you can see now, the high pressure fuel pump is right here, and we can get access to it. So this high pressure fuel pump is a direct replacement for the one that we have down here. Now. Because we have this extra one, we'll be able to see all the inlet and outlet ports along with the areas where it mounts up to the cylinder head. So there's going to be a total of one, two, three bolts that are securing it in place. And then there's going to be two different lines going in and out of the high pressure fuel pump that are going to be working for the engine. Now, not only that, this component right here is what attaches and slides into the camshaft. So with that being said, we first need to disconnect the two lines that are found on the back of it. And then once we have that removed, we'll be able to take out the one, two, three bolts that are securing it to the cylinder head. So we're going to begin on the back side because that is where both of these two lines here are. So these two lines here need to be disconnected. So this one here is what is called the low pressure fuel line. This is the inlet that's going into the high pressure fuel pump. And this is not exactly held in place really tightly. There's two little plastic connectors that are found inside this little clip that you have to push in so you can pull it out. Now, if you guys are driving your car or let's say you just parked it, and there's still some pressure that's built up in the high pressure fuel pump, you're going to see some fuel that's gonna be coming out of this line and this one. So just keep that in mind. Put some regs underneath here so you can catch the fuel. If you're working on a hot car, I would let this cool and sit a little bit. So not only are you working with a cold engine, but there's gonna be less pressure inside of here. If you guys can let your car sit overnight, it's gonna depressurize this nearly completely. There's still gonna be a little bit of fuel in the lines, but it's not gonna be pressurized. The fuel pressure that is gonna be found inside the rail after the high pressure fuel pump is going to be around 800 PSI. So that is a lot of pressure. Mini has a really fancy tool to take this off, but you don't really need it. I'm gonna be using like a regular hook and pick set. You just basically push in on the two little tabs, one found on this side, one found on the opposite side. You can push them one at a time and just pull the hose back. So what we're gonna do first is instead of taking this one off, we're gonna take this off. So I have a flare nut wrench. This requires a 12 mil. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. So if I'm looking at the car this way, I'm sitting at the front, this is the back side of the motor. I wanna spin this to the right because the thread comes this way. So be careful when you're backing this off, especially if you've just driven the car. Doesn't require much force to break it loose. This should only be tightened up to 33 foot pounds if I'm not mistaken. The rag underneath, just get ready. And you can hear it depressurize and you can see a little bit of fuel spewing out. So be sure you have something underneath to catch it all. There's going to be a little bit of residual fuel in the line, but there's not going to be too much pressure after you let this sit for a little while. So all I'm doing here is just taking off this nut and it should be able to release this line and this jam nut from the high pressure fuel pump. 
And then once you back it off, you'll be able to see that the line itself can move. So that's disconnected. We can now remove this one here. So this is the tricky one. If you have a set of long reach ring pliers, the ones that basically clamp like this, you'll be able to get this off easily. Um, but I unfortunately do not have that. So I'm gonna just keep trying to go at it with these picks. From the side with this one little pick on the side here, you, you can push in and there's not gonna be a lot of movement, but as soon as you push it, you'll be able to take it off of the high pressure fuel pump just like that. So just take note of how high this is in relation to the other fuel lines in the car because if you let this drop, fuel will come out of here. So using this little fancy stopper, you can slide this with the rubber end facing the connector and you can slide the open end over top of the line and it will prevent any fuel from coming out of here. So you can leave this wherever you want and you won't have a leaking problem. So now with all of this out, we can disconnect the little electrical connector that's found underneath here, going to the high pressure fuel pump. It's a little connector, just slide it down. And afterwards there's gonna be three T30 Torx bolts that are securing the, the HPFP up to the head. So given that this is what the new high pressure fuel pump looks like, we'll be able to tell that there's gonna be one bolt found up here. There's gonna be another one down on the bottom above the connector. And then there's gonna be another one down here on this side. So we're gonna to have to take all three of those out to remove the high pressure fuel pump. After you take out each one of these Torx bolts, you can set them aside because we're gonna be using those again. You can then grab the entire high pressure fuel pump and slide it out of the cylinder head. So keep in mind, there might be a couple wires like down here in the way. So just try and guide this out. And we should be able to just bring this and then compare this to our other one. So this here is the old one, let's put the new one in. So right here you can see we have the new and the old high pressure fuel pumps. So the one on the left here, as you can tell, is the old one. This is not generating the pressure that is required for this direct injection engine. Now, an easy way to tell if these things are a proper OEM piece or not, Take a look at not only on the top, the little barcode that's right here. It's kind of difficult to see that, but on the new one, you can very easily see it. And also you can take a look at the part number that's found on them. So the proper BMW part number will be listed on here, but the exact same concept works for other vehicles. So now with this one here out, we'll be able to replace it with this brand new OEM piece. If you guys have looked into this high pressure fuel pump replacement, you'll take note that the prices for replacement ones are not cheap by any means. Now, that is why I did this move. So this new one that we see here is a direct OEM mini piece. This is from FCP Euro, which is where I purchased this pump. Now, the cool thing about this company is that, don't ask me how they make money on this, but once you buy this part, if it ever fails, you will get a replacement one sent to you for free. It is an amazing thing if you guys are on the consumer end of this. I have no clue how these guys stay in business because each one of these costs about $1,200 if you guys need to buy another one, that's a lot of money you have to fork out. And considering that these are the problematic parts of these minis, you know, it's not a half bad idea to get some sort of security with them. So most parts that you buy would come with a one year warranty. But I mean, if you guys are doing this kind of job, you want your car to last you more than a year. So if you guys are replacing a new one of these every single year, it's gonna add up really fast. So that's why I bought this from FCP Euro. You guys can find more information in the description box. I considered buying this from ECS. I considered buying a cheap one. From all the research that I've done, it makes the most amount of sense in this case to buy an OEM mini piece. But as for the actual install, it's gonna be the exact same reversal of the disassembly. So sliding the new high pressure fuel pump on, this little tab here needs to align itself into the camshaft, which is found inside of there. So this might be a little bit tricky, but if you just slide this down into place, you should be able to push it on. Now. You might have to clock this a little bit, maybe to get it on right, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. And as you can tell right there, it just slid in. So that's now in place. So you can grab those three Torx bolts that we removed earlier, and you can secure these into the cylinder head. After all three of those bolts are secured and just hand tight, you can grab your torque wrench and then torque each one of these up to 8.1 foot pounds. Following that, we can go ahead and basically put these two lines in and also install the little connector that's found underneath to complete the job. 
So the connector should just slide right up. Following that, you're gonna wanna install this line here first. So this hard line should be replaced if it's old. It's not a half bad idea to do that. This connects up to the, the high pressure fuel pump and the fuel rail down on the bottom end of this line. But what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be torquing this up to a certain torque spec. Now, once you have this little nut here for the fuel line slightly tightened up onto the high pressure fuel pump, you wanna use a crow's foot that's like this. It's basically an open-ended wrench that you can put on a torque wrench and you're gonna to wanna to tighten up this nut first to 11 foot pounds and then to 25 foot pounds. So if you don't have this special tool, you will not be able to properly torque this up and tighten this nut to the proper spec. But because we have them, we'll be able to get a first reading of 11 foot pounds and we'll be able to hear a click once we tighten it, like that. So once that's done, get your torque wrench, turn it to 25 foot pounds. And then after you torque this, you're gonna wanna turn the car on, get it all going, and then you're gonna eventually torque this nut one more time after it's been warmed up to the same 25 foot pounds, just to make sure that nothing's moved. So once you hear that second click, you know that's good to go. Push the intake back, and then we can finally connect up the last line right here that's going to the fuel pump. So you'll just take off the little blue connector and then slide it over top, just like how we had it with the old pump. And that's not going anywhere. So at this point, we can grab the intake parts and anything else that we removed from the engine bay. We can put that back on and then let me show you how you're gonna wanna turn your car on for the first time. All right, so I'm currently in my car. I have my key here. Now, before you just go ahead and turn the vehicle on, you wanna run fuel into the fuel system. So we wanna prime the entire system. So what we're gonna do is put the key in the car. Do not press the brake or clutch to turn it on. You're gonna basically cycle it so that the car goes key on, engine off. So that's cycle one. You can take the key out and do it again. You should be able to hear the fuel system pressurize whenever you do that. You should be able to like hear it turn on and then turn off. So let me show you what it sounds like from the engine bay. I wouldn't quite call it a loud noise, but you can distinctly hear it. You should be able to hear it turn on and then turn off. So with that being said, you should do that a couple times so that the fuel system gets pressurized. That means that when you turn the car on for the first time, there, you're not gonna be running the engine dry of fuel. You're also not gonna be running the fuel pump dry of fuel. So right now, it's pretty much ready to go. Let's turn the car on and see if it works. So when you turn the car on for the first time, because the fuel pump is camshaft driven, you can get as much fuel as you can to the high pressure fuel pump, but it will not pressurize and make 800 PSI of fuel until the engine is actually turning. But with that being said, the car is running, wheels are kind of spinning, kind of don't really know why, but she runs. Fuel pump is in and it should give you a much more stable idle when you have a properly functioning fuel pump. It was a quite pricey fix, but it will not be hurting my wallet later. It's gonna give you that first initial hit, and that's it. So right now, with the Mini in this condition, with the slicks on, it's pretty much good to go. I've gotta put the, the wide body fenders in, but unfortunately, it rained earlier, and it's like we're gonna be getting a whole bunch more rain. So we're gonna be getting a thunderstorm, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to drive the Mini in those conditions. But she runs, she works, and the idle is mint. Very nice. This is what's gonna happen. Now, on another note, if you guys did have a check engine light, you don't need to clear it, but if you guys do have one and you put the, the high pressure fuel pump in and it all works, the light should turn off. So just keep that in mind if you guys are doing this install. The tools that we used today were not that crazy. The parts that we installed were not that difficult to install. Now, just for reference, my local BMW dealership wanted to charge me $2,100 for the part plus labor to install this. I was able to pick this up for less than half of that for the part, and then the install took what? Half an hour at most? Parts weren't too difficult. The necessary tools aren't that expensive, and you guys can get this exact same thing done at your house. You don't need to go to some crazy place. You don't need to go to a mechanic to get this replaced. So this hopefully guys has helped you guys out. 
Most cars nowadays are all going towards that direct injection route and these high pressure fuel pumps are going to be notorious for getting replaced only because of the super high pressures. If you guys want to find any of the parts or tools that I used in this video, you guys can find that information in the description box along with torque specs. Otherwise guys, if you have any further questions, comment sections down there. Thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you in the next one.